So in the last podcast, we left off looking at how we had two working models. We had a working model of an Earth-centered uh, universe from Ptolemy that could explain everything that we see. And we had our heliocentric model that Kepler modified to allow us to explain everything that we see again. So we get these two models. And now what we need to do is gather observational evidence that will support one and refute the other. And that's where Galileo comes in. Galileo Galilei was the first true astronomer in the fact that he used the telescope, the primary means for uh, astronomers to gather information. Now, he did not create the telescope. That is important. A lot of people will give him credit for this. He did not create it. But he did use it and record his observations for astronomy. That's where he comes in. And he made five earth-shattering observations that changed the way that we saw the universe. So we're going to go through those five things here first. The first observation that we're going to talk about is the moon. Now, before, astronomers only use their eyes, and we are very limited on what we can see with our eyes. With the moon, you can look up, and you can see Mare, you can see the highlands, uh, and during certain times, it looks like it makes a face on the moon. But when Galileo made his very crude telescope and pointed it at the moon, that gave him some magnification that no one previous of him uh, was able to see. And he zoomed in on the moon and was actually able to pick out craters. Now, that doesn't seem like uh, very earth-shattering um, uh, evidence. But these craters and valleys that he sees on the moon were co a complete surprise. Before Galileo, again, Earth was the center of the universe. And everything outwards of the Earth all right, were thought of to be the heavens. The planets were in the heavens. The stars, the moon, all those things were known as heavenly bodies. And according to their beliefs at the time, anything in the heavens had to be perfect. Well, obviously, this was not so if the moon is heavily cratered, right, it doesn't match up with that, which is a slight problem for uh, those scientists for the geocentric camp. The next observation was somewhat similar to the first. When we look at the sun, right, again, we thought this was a heavenly body that was uh, to be perfect. And this is a, a, a very advanced picture uh, using hydrogen alpha, which he did not get to see. But what he did was kind of like our pinhole uh, viewers that we used in the first part of uh, this class, where he projected an image of the sun onto a piece of paper, and he actually saw that the sun is not this perfect place where, that with no blemishes, but in fact, he saw these sunspots. He wasn't the first to see the sunspots. All right, early Greek Astronomers uh, have been noted to have seen a sunspot or two, but where Galileo uh, uh, triumphed is he studied these over the course of time, and he noticed that these sunspots uh, were actually on the sun. Before that, people thought they might be clouds on the sun, all right, that orbit around it, or maybe other little planets, but Galileo was the first to show that these were actually part of the sun and would move and transit across them um, as the sun rotated. So he actually proved that our sunspots uh, were part of the sun and the fact that the sun itself rotated. Third observation here and the fourth both have to do with the planet Jupiter. <clears throat> now, when you look at the planets, again, the reason why they're called planets is they tend to wander. Um, the stars are fixed, but otherwise, they look just like stars, points of light. When Galileo used his telescope to zoom in on Jupiter, he saw that first off, Jupiter is not a point of light. It's actually a disk. So it has dimensions to it, all right? It's not just a point of light, but is a disk, all right? Uh, that was an important revelation, all right? It shows that they are fundamentally different other than just their motions compared to stars. The fourth observation, all right, if I were to dim down the stars in the background and make it look a little bit closer to what Galileo saw, was that, let's see, 
was that there are these four bright stars that were in line with Jupiter. And these were four stars that no one had ever seen before. Galileo was the first human ever to see these because telescopes allow him to not only zoom in and see better detail of the planets and the moons and the sun, but it also collects more light so he could see fainter objects. And he noticed that these four stars were in this remarkable configuration. And so the next night, he goes back to observe these. But what he noticed the next day was that they weren't in the same spot. They changed, and then the next night, and then the next night. And what Galileo realized was that these are not stars, but these were actually moons. He discovered the four Galilean moons that orbit around Jupiter. These are the four largest moons. Uh, we know now Jupiter has something like 60 moons. But this was the first real problem for the geocentric model of the universe. Because what Galileo discovered was that not everything goes around the Earth. All right. In fact, these moons are going around Jupiter. So if moons could go around Jupiter, then what's to say that uh, planets can't go around the Sun? This last observation that Galileo made was about Venus. And if we think back, one of the problems that Aristotle originally had was that certain planets appeared to get brighter and dimmer. Venus was the main one that really gets brighter and really dimmer. And the way he explained that, it was actually getting closer and further away. That's the way that the geocentric universe uh, tried to explain it using those epicycles and inferences. But what uh, Galileo saw was that that's not really the cause behind it. As you can see here, Venus is a full disk. You can see uh, if you were to compare it to the moon as a full moon phase. And what we see though, over the course of time, as Venus moves across the sky, is that it actually starts to appear to go through phases just like our moon. And this was the actual observational cause for the uh, dimming and brightening of, of the planets. Right. And the way that these phases work um, can only be explained if Venus goes around the sun. So what uh, you have to do is either completely abandon the fact that the Earth is in the center, or you say the Earth is still in the center, but Venus is a planet that goes around the sun, as the sun still goes around us. Um, so this is the most important. It is actual evidence that states that not everything goes around the Earth. In fact, uh, planet-wise, Venus definitely cannot. It has to go around the sun. It doesn't say anything about the other planets. Um, but this is really good observational evidence uh, that supports the idea that the sun is in the center, not the earth.